Today on Burke Make Stuff, we're going to be talking about efficient spray paint and aerosol storage and retrieval for your small shop. So if you're here for that, you're in the right place. My shop is only 12 by 14 feet wide. That means every single inch of this shop has to be used to the utmost efficiency. And the problem I have right now is I'm using a lot of spray paint and my spray paint is in the other side of my house. I actually have to go through my dining room, my living room, my kitchen, my foyer to the front storage room to get what I need in order to bring it back through the kitchen, the dining room, the living room, back into the shop before I can even use it. Today, all that changes. <laughs> With my particular mix of neurodivergencies, I work best when I can see things in front of me in some sort of organized fashion. And if they're not, it's like they don't even exist. So this, things just stuffed on top of each other, behind each other, it just doesn't work. If it's visible, efficient, and organized, it's much easier to put into use in my shop. The star of this project by far is this. It's called Gridwall. And the reason it's so awesome is that each one of these little compartments is 2.75 inches wide. And a regular can of spray paint is 2.6 inches wide, which means we can make use of all of these little cubbies and stack all of our paints and organize the hell out of all of our paints really easily. Buying grid wall panels online can be expensive and often they don't let you buy just one. You get them in like a pack of three. And if you only need one, that's a huge waste. But luckily, they're all over Facebook Marketplace and you can get them cheap and you can get just one if you need it. I got these ones upstate in New York in a town called East Durham when unfortunately one of my favorite businesses up there, a place called The Westerner went out of business. The owner's retired. Awesome store. If you know it, you know the loss. And if you don't know it, you don't know the loss. But the panels, they are ubiquitous all across the United States, so you should easily be able to get them in your area on Facebook Marketplace. And if you take a look over here, this is the area I designated to hang all of our spray paint. Remembering to leave clearance for the storage drawers I have that open into that area, I grabbed the measurements of the free space to figure out exactly how much grid wall I could fit in it. It turns out in this tiny space, I can actually fit a piece of grid wall five by 14 squares. So that's like, it's a lot of paint. Hey, sorry, to interrupt. Uh, just wanted to let you know, in case you were wondering, you see that orange tape that's on the grid wall? That's what I use to mark out the size that I need to cut because it's really hard to mark on grid wall visibly. So I just use tape. So you should too. That's all, just uh, go back to watching me, sorry. <laughs> Now it's time to think about cutting the grid wall into the size piece that we need. You could very easily do this with an angle grinder or a hacksaw. I'm gonna use these bolt cutters because I have them readily accessible and because this is pretty easy to get through. I'm then gonna take it over to my bench vise and file down any sharp edges and then we're ready to put it up. There are four of these brackets that come with the grid in order to mount it to the wall. But if we use them as they are, when mounted, the grid is only gonna be two inches off the wall. Let's change perspective to see why that's a problem. If we use it like this, the grid wall is mounted two inches from the wall, but the average can of spray paint is eight inches tall. What that means is if we set it up like this, the paint would wanna fall out and that's not gonna work. So what we're gonna use is blocking behind that mount so that it's taken to five inches off the wall. That way most of the weight of the spray paint is behind the grid and it'll lean back towards the wall. The next problem we run into is on the mounting wall. Here, we have a stud to go directly into and here, we have no stud, just sheetrock. So what I'm gonna use here is a toggle bolt and I've already explained how to use those like, I don't know, three years ago in a video. So here's me three years ago explaining how to do that. Toggler Toggle Bolts. Now Toggler is not a company that sponsors me. They're just a great product that I go to because I know I can depend on it. Let's take a look at how to use these right now. Let's pretend that this piece of wood in my vise is the drywall you're gonna be mounting to. The first thing you need to do is drill a hole in accordance with whatever size toggle bolt you're using. I'm using a quarter inch toggle bolt, so I'll need a half inch hole. If you take a look at this bolt, there's actually three pieces to it. The metal top part is called the channel. There's two plastic straps that lead down to the plastic cap. You insert that metal channel through the hole you've drilled and then pull it, making sure it seats firmly against the backside of the drywall. Then you take your plastic cap, 
push it up against the opposite end of the drywall, snap off your two plastic straps, and that's about it. You just take your bolt and whatever you're bolting to the wall, affix them, and you're done. The blocks and mounts that line up with the stud simply get screwed into place, but the toggle bolts I have aren't long enough to go through the almost four inches of material made up by the mount, the two blocks, and the drywall, so I'm gonna have to engineer that one a bit. I'll take the first block that's gonna be directly against the wall and drill a centered three-quarter inch inset with a Fostner bit, just deep enough that the head of the toggle bolt can sink beneath the surface of the block. In that inset, I'll then drill a centered 5 16 hole all the way through. That setup will be able to accept the quarter inch toggle bolt and a quarter inch washer I've decided to add for extra support. I then go through the process of mounting that on the wall with a toggle bolt and take the second layer and the grid wall mount and attach them to the first layer using two and a half inch wood screws. For the bottom we just rinse and repeat, with the only difference being that the grid wall mount opening will be facing down. By doing this we can securely hold the grid wall in place while it's being jostled and moved around while being used. Just a quick note, when you're hanging the actual grid wall panel, you're going to have to take the screws out of the bottom two mounts so you can swivel them out of the way, put them back in place, and then lock them back in place so that everything is nice and secure. There's only really like two more things to do. The first, of course, is to get all your paint and organize it by color. And the second, because I am a firm believer that if you're gonna go halfway crazy, you might as well go all the way, is to hyper-organize and label each and every individual spray paint can with the type of finish that paint has. Yeah, took a little while. But now I can walk over to it, I know exactly what I'm grabbing, and I know that I have what I need. So, if you like this hack and you're looking for some more, there's a bunch up here, you should check out one of these videos, because, um, that's what they're there for. And uh, have a great day. See you around.